During my midterm furlough from being in Senegal, I was visiting with an old friend, also a pastor. Uh, his name is uh, Steve. And um, somehow the subject of salvation and judgment came up. And uh, he started to challenge me about the word eternal. And uh, he was showing me ver various verses throughout the scriptures where eternal just couldn't mean eternal in the sense of forever without every, any ending. And uh, then he challenged me about the idea that hell had a purpose and that, uh, um, you know, the, the verses that relating to that as being eternal wasn't really that being the case. When Steve brought this whole idea to me that hell wasn't forever, then all of a sudden the idea of it, judgment, having purpose, um, caused me to really want to seek this out more. And I asked uh, Steve, I said, do you have anything, uh, anybody that's written on this theme, that, that uh, things I can, can read? Because I was scheduled to return to Africa within a week. So he gave me a couple booklets and I took them back home with me to Dakar, Senegal. And so over the next months that pursued, I began to eat, read, uh, yeah, eat. Yeah, I was eating it all right. Mm -hmm. I was just taking it all in. I was reading a little book uh, by a guy named Andrew Jukes. Um, uh, a pastor from back in London, England, back in the 1800s. And it's a little book, only this small, titled The Restitution of All Things. But, and this man who wrote had such a humble attitude, such a, such a great respect for the Word of God, and he just drew me into his writing. And he was presenting a point of view or a theological perspective, if you will, that painted a whole different picture of judgment. And everything was scripture after scripture after scripture. And his grasp of the Old Testament was amazing. And I just couldn't see any flaws, anything that I could point my finger at and everything he taught to say, no, that can't be that. It just resonated as truth, as truth, as truth. And I was just praying, walking you know, in my neighborhood, and the thought came to my mind, if God would save me, why wouldn't he save everyone? You know, what was so special about me that somehow I could go into his presence and eternal life, whereas most of the human race was still gonna have to suffer forever. It was the same blood that was shed for all of us. Even the faith that I had was his gift. So what made me special that I should benefit and everyone did not? And then I thought that, well, you know, how could I really have the true peace to know that I was even one of them, knowing that all these others would not make it? And it was hard to really fully explain what went through in my mind at that moment. But all these thoughts together woven, there was all of a sudden this assurance that flooded my soul. And I just knew that. If God is saving one, he's saving all, or he's saving none. I have a brother that I love very much, and um, he's my older brother. He was an alcoholic, but when my mother died when I was 12 years old, he, um, my, I always used to take accordion lessons. My mother was p paying for those lessons for many years. And uh, anyway, she died, and my brother Bob, you know, took over and started to pay for my accordion lessons and he brought me on his uh, in his roofing company and taught me how to do roofing and gave me a job and he gave me my first car and he was really a big brother he was 14 years older than I and so I loved my brother but anyway to make a long story short um, you know when I became an, uh, a born-again believer I would say when I was around 18 I was very evangelical I would tell everybody about Jesus I'd go on the street corners I'd yeah, I, did, I was very, very evangelistic. Anyways, I was very evangelistic towards my brother. But he never took to it. And he was always, you know, he had his own way and he didn't want to hear it. And uh, so, anyway, I had come to the point where I had written him off. You know, I said, well, you know, he's, he's the last one, whatever. But uh, in his later years, uh, he moved into my neighborhood. I invited him to come and live to, in Texas with us. He, we're from New Hampshire. And, uh, and because at that time in my life, I had come under this perspective, this understanding, that God is never going to give up on anybody. And I saw my brother in a different way that I ever saw him before. I saw good in him that I never saw before. I saw, it was as though, you know, in the old way, it was like the righteous and the evil, the wicked and the righteous. And it was somehow, somehow, even though we were taught 
that um, it's all by grace and we all deserve hell and all that. In, in reality, there was this, there was this attitude that came into Christianity, into all of us, that we had a sense of superiority against unbeliever. As much as we tried to deny it or acted it as though it wasn't there, for you know, there was almost a sense that well, God chose me for a reason. I believe He He allowed me to believe, or you know, He saw something obviously in me that He didn't see in Him. So I'm a believer, and He's not somehow in in thwarted thinking. I think that it's 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 there's a mixture there somehow. And uh, but this understanding just changed my whole view of my brother. I began to see him in a way I never saw him before. I might love him. Because you know why? Because I knew that God was never going to give up on him. And I knew that the blood of Jesus applied to him. And I knew that one day, he was going to worship Jesus just like I am. And you know, and I wasn't, I wasn't thinking of him going to eternal to hell anymore, you know? And I just knew it. <laughs> it just changed my life.